What's up everyone and welcome back. This video is titled Man Demands Money from a Woman Unaware that Marines are Stationed Next Door. And here goes. Everything happened in an instant. Two men surrounded her car and she hardly had time to think about what they were saying before it was too late. Something snapped inside Ethel. She wasn't about to go down without a fight. She put the car into reverse and hollered furiously as she climbed the curb. She heard boots on the tarmac and realized they had come for her. Ethel Mills, 60, of Linwood, walked through the shopping complex as quickly as she could while keeping her head down. She tried to keep her bearings by ignoring the appealing window displays at J.C. Penney's and Hand M. The mall was packed with youthful shoppers that afternoon, but she continued on her way to the Pearl Vision optometrist, unfazed by the commotion. Ethel's anxiety grew with each step she made. Her eyesight wasn't what it used to be, despite the fact that she was still in good shape for her age. She'd started to notice a fuzzy fog around the edges of her eyesight becoming thicker in the last few weeks. She was so preoccupied with her own thoughts that she didn't notice the two men as she walked. They did, however, notice her. Finally, she noticed the eye specialist's sign and stepped inside. She sat in the high back chair, the chilly middle of the autorefractor on her forehead, waiting for the ophthalmologist's diagnosis. She was glad when the doctor seemed unconcerned. He prescribed her stronger lenses that she'd have to pick up in a few days. She returned to the parking lot after a long walk, unaware that she had been marked. Unfortunately, robbers frequently prey on the elderly, and Ethel was the ideal easy target. She was alone and helpless, and the two thugs never expected her to fight back because of her age. Before we continue, if you like this video please like, comment, or subscribe. We'd greatly appreciate it. Now back to the video. They kept a safe distance behind her, waiting for her to exit the security of the packed mall. Ethel walked back to the parking lot, huffing and puffing. The walk was long. She berated herself for parking so far away and decided to park closer the next time she would come. But at least she had done what she had come here for. When she arrived at the gate, she was surprised to see that the sky had already begun to fade into dusk and that the parking lot was nearly empty. The two figures following her from a distance noticed the same. Ethel climbed into her car and rested for a moment to collect her breath. She was tired from all the walking and going around. Age was definitely taking a toll on her. But they were on her before she could lock it. She carefully put on her safety belt before reaching to lock the door. But before she could lock her door a hand stopped her. Two strange men were crowding her door. One man was of smaller stature and the other was of heavy build. The smaller one pushed the door open while the larger one grabbed her handbag, which was still slung over her shoulder. Then her gaze was drawn to what the man was hiding beneath his shirt. When the man grabbed her handbag, she decided in an instant that she was not going to give it to him. She couldn't take the thought of losing everything in her purse, no matter how ridiculous it seemed. Everything was inside, including credit cards, a small amount of cash, her social security card, and notes from her grandchildren. Was she going to lose all of it? What was going to happen? Fear crept on her. But Ethel was just a normal citizen. She was a police officer once and a good one at that. Although she had aged, all the years worth of experience being a police officer were still with her. She felt it was best not to fight back as a retired police officer but she ignored her own advice. She gathered all of her strength, seized her handbag strap in her fist, and yanked, pulling it free. In the meantime, her other hand rushed out to shut the door. But these thugs weren't going down without a fight. One of the men pounded on the window and flashed his weapon to her, but she was unconcerned. She threw the car into reverse and planted her foot hard on the pedal. One of the thugs was now standing in front of the car, and she knew precisely what she wanted. The other raced around and came from behind, attempting to force the door open once more. Then they noticed the resolve on her face. She slammed her small hand on the car's horn, hoping to get the attention of someone, anyone. Then she slammed the gear into drive. The thug's eyes widened as the car began to speed toward the larger man, and the other fled. She climbed the curb with tires screeching and an angry hoot. These thugs were not going to get away with it. She was going to make sure of it. She made a sharp turn on two wheels to go ahead of the second man. She was successful in cutting him off. The thugs realized they had made a mistake. They chose the wrong person to mess with. But it was going to be much worse for them. The thieves who believed they could take advantage of Ethel failed to realize what was right in front of them in the strip mall just a few steps from the parking lot. 
Their attempt to rob Ethel was a mistake, but the horror on their faces rapidly transformed to absolute terror when the door flung open and the Marines rushed out. They had just recently discovered their huge blunder. Sergeant Ricardo Scabesta, Staff Sergeant Bryson Twig, and Sergeant Ben Shoemaker had heard a loud ruckus outside their office in the Armed Forces Career Center and acted quickly. They presented intimidating figures dressed in their blue dress uniforms. They chased the two thugs straight into the road and into peak hour traffic. Ethel had yelled to the Marines that the men were armed, but it had no effect. Shoemaker pursued one of the thugs. The thug definitely was outmatched. No, that kid was never going to outrun me, he said later. Marines run towards the sound of chaos. Shoemaker caught up to the man swiftly, and his Marine Corps martial arts skills kicked in. He instinctively seized the man's wrist and took him down using the Marine Corps martial arts wrist lock technique. My first thought was, we're on the grass, I'm just going to tackle him, he said. I didn't think about it until it was done. Shoemaker later stated that the last time he did the move was when he was stationed in Iraq. Unfortunately, the other suspect managed to flee, but because of Shoemaker's quick thinking, the other was apprehended as well. The police arrived soon after the scene. The gravity of the situation then struck Shoemaker hard. Fear came later, he said. At the time, no, I didn't think about it. Once I sat down, it was like holy crap. It's different because I have a kid. That's all I kept thinking about. Going into combat, I didn't have one. That's the first time I've actually felt the hole. What if something happened? Shoemaker had assumed the man was armed, but he had pursued him fearlessly. The suspect was later discovered to have a metal baseball bat hidden in the back of his pants. The search for the man's armed accomplice continues, but the Marines believe both individuals were spooked when confronted with the highly trained military personnel. Shoemaker has since been hailed as a hero, having been covered by media and interviewed on television alongside his fellow Marines, Twig and Skabesta. Major Sung Kim, their commanding officer, called the gallant men's actions reflective of the courage and commitment they embody. Yet Shoemaker stays humble in the face of heroism. What are you supposed to do? That's what we're trained to do. I can't sit here and let it happen, he said. They set a great example for their fellow Marines, and especially for the young parolees who are studying to learn what it means to be a Marine, remarked their commanding officer. Their response reminds all Marines that we have a responsibility to always do the right thing, regardless of whether or not anyone is watching. It's what we do. From the beginning, what we're taught in boot camp, it's a part of us, Skibesta said in an interview. And Shoemaker agreed, it's really what I'm trained to do, be it recruiting, be it that. My job is to protect the United States public, he said. But we have more heroes in this story. Don't forget about Ethel. Ethel was quick on her feet. Despite her age, she fought mightily against the criminals. Her police officer instincts surely helped her do the right thing at the critical moment. Of course, the Marines being nearby helped a ton in the situation. Who knew what would have happened if they weren't there, especially since the men were armed? The would-be robbers were very unlucky to have chosen Ethel as a target, but they were even unluckier to have attempted their crime just outside a Marine recruitment office. You never know what situation you would land in at any moment in life. Being prepared and cautious is one way of dealing with tough situations like this. Since not everyone can be as lucky as Ethel. That's the end of this video. Thank you for watching. As always, if you like this video, please like, comment or subscribe and we'll see you in our next video.